uh, oh, well, I, I'll go get it. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> One second. He's out. He's Okay, apparently we are on the air. Oh, maybe you're not. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't forget to turn your stuff off, phones and such. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yeah. Here. Current. Here. Freely. Present. Harrison. Here. Pinkelman. Majeric. Here. Martin. Here. Scott. <clears throat> Valrath. Present. Werfel. Here. Yarborough. Present. Elliot. Here. Mr. Cherry, you have 10 present, two absent. Thank you. Minutes from uh, two weeks ago. I'm sorry, a week ago, the 13th. I'm ahead of myself. I wish it was 27. Minutes of the 13th. Any changes? Anyone want to move to approve them? I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Moved by Majeric, supported by Bell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Requisitions? We were so close to not having any, but we only had one. Does anybody have any questions? No? Perfect. Thank you. OK. Are we doing Jill or Warren first? Warren's got 20 to 30 minutes lined up for us. Just kidding, Warren. <laughs> Warren has a brief presentation and then we'll uh, dive into Silver Beach. Okay, thank, thank you, Warren. You know, we try to keep everything to two minutes. So. I'm going to dive into Silver Beach. I did that too, There you go, sir. There you got it. All right. Morning, everyone. I am Warren Parrish, your equalization director. This morning, just covering the apportionment report. It's an annual thing that we do every year. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, contrary to what Ryan has indicated. Uh, so, just briefly, the, the report accomplishes two things it shows all of the millage rates that would be levied throughout the county. And then it shows also along with that, the revenue impact uh, of said rates estimated. The report covers some 200 plus different millage rates that are levied by the 70 various taxing authorities throughout Berrien County. 
I'm going to circle back on that in a second. Um, the main function of the board today is to approve all the millage rates that we've spread across all the taxing authorities, which also requires ensuring that they have been reduced according to the various uh, millage reductions, the main one being Headley. We've calculated all of the 2022 millage reduction fractions. In 2022, uh, there are approximately 39 Headley millage reductions. This contrasts to 53 we had last year, so we're down from last year. Now, I know what you're thinking. These numbers here, the 31, 15, and 7, don't add up to uh, 39. But you're also probably thinking, how can that be? Because equalization doesn't make mistakes. You're right on both accounts. Uh, because this is so boring, I have to throw in some curveballs to spice things up. The actual numbers are 25, 10, and 4. But A plus, everyone, because I know you caught it. So as I mentioned previously, we've got 70 taxing uh, authorities. There's a breakdown. The next few slides go over what's actually in the report. I'm not going to spend any time going through this you have the report um, if you have any questions you know where to find me um, but it is a ton of information and a ton of work uh, we chip away at this all year as we're getting the millage requests and it's it's it is a really a mountain of work um, so i'm going to skip through this the report content here um, and the main thing i wanted to talk about before letting you go is we have to approve these rates in October. It's just what the law says. Problem is, is you have the November election and we have several millages on the ballot for November. Three local units or uh, taxing, taxing units have millage rates on the November ballot that will be collected yet this year. Um, and that's Galeen, Niles, and of course the, the Berrien County Public Safety Millage. The reason I'm pointing this out is because Next month, I'm more than likely going to have an amended report and resolution in front of you. Uh, so that should be fairly routine. You know, this, this happens as, as the elections are the way that they are. So it's just the way we have to do it. Um, but other than that, you're approving the rates and uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> All right. Oh, yes, Commissioner Arbro. Uh, is it a billion? Was that our, our value? Yes, um, that is yes, the Berrien, that is the total ad valorem taxable value of Berrien County for 2022. And uh, it's a lot. It adds up. Yeah, you're going to need you're going to need to know. Absolutely. <laughs> That was quick. I can't believe it. and get started. Um, thank you for this opportunity to come in front of you and speak to you about the work that the county park staff and um, DLZ has been working on for quite a while now concerning the Silver Beach Master Plan and improvements to the park. Um, in March of last year, this group approved, after going out to bid, approved the Parks Department to work with DLZ. They have an office in St. Joe. Uh, run by Jason Vetney here. He's here to speak with us today as well. And um, they were slated to help us design and put together a master plan. The master plan was to address the aging infrastructure at Silver Beach and also finding ways to improve and enhance the Silver Beach experience and amenities. And we knew that the park experience meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So we assembled a steering committee um, to help us guide our thoughts and plans. The steering committee was made up of current park staff, retired park staff, retired county staff, law enforcement, uh, city of St. Joseph officials, 
local residents from the below the bluff neighborhood. We brought in our current concessionaire and we um, worked with our park commissioners and a couple of county commissioners as well to bring these ideas to a plan on paper. And um, we also really valued our current seasonal staff. Um, they're on site day in and day out through the summer. So we asked them what kind of improvements they'd like to see at the park as well. So last summer we were able to, uh, the staff and the steering committee were able to review a master plan and put more feedback into the plan. Earlier this year, we held a park commission work session that the public was at as well and gained even more information to put towards this plan. And in the meantime, park staff have met with concession professionals, service professionals, possible investors, Disability Network of Southwest Michigan and multiple playground design companies. So we have a, a lot of great information gathered and we just wanted to bring this plan at this point in the process to this group. We, um, Jason is here to go through the details. We do welcome <laughs> questions. If there's questions that you need further discussion on later, I'm happy to bring that back and talk to you one-on-one -on -one or come back at another time. But here is our design concept up to this point after gathering all that information. Okay. And just the arrow. Yeah, okay. So good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Bentney. I'm an architect and project manager with DLZ. It's a local A&E firm. Um, just as context, I am a city resident and our firm sits, uh, is, we have a local office in the 505 building, so we look over the bluff. So this project is, is near and dear to my heart um, for many reasons. Um, uh, again, the, the, so the county engaged us to essentially uh, do a master plan for this location. Um, as you can see, for, for two reasons, the, the, uh, primarily in regards to the parks, uh, the playground structures and the concession building, They've essentially outlived their, their useful life. Um, great facilities, but um, uh, it, it's time to upgrade the amenities uh, you know, at, at the park. So that as a design team, we established um, you know, goals for, for the project, just in terms of enhancing the park experience, improving the amenities and infrastructure. Safety was a primary concern. A sense of place and history was a primary concern. Um, obviously, as a county facility, we wanted to focus on, you know, durable, low maintenance uh, um, installations, uh, sustainability, and just, just a high quality park experience for the residents. So this is a, the existing site plan. The blue rectangles at, at the top there, uh, it's the number one is the existing concessions building, and then the toilet buildings, and then the park admin building to the right of that. You can see the existing uh, parking areas and the maintenance facility down there at the bottom, uh, number seven, um, the blue rectangle at the bottom. So that, that's the existing site. Uh, as part of the process, we looked at the site context and, and, and history just to get some inspiration about the developing ideas for the new proposal. And uh, some similar installations that have been done kind of around the country, you know, in, in terms of uh, new concessions building and, and park like settings near water uh, and, and drawing inspiration from that. So um, I'm going to flip through these quickly. I know that um, many of you have, have seen aspects of this before, so I'll flip through this quickly, but again, uh, welcome uh, questions as, as we go through the, the slides. This is an overall master plan of the proposal. So um, the primary focus, again, are the playground structures. Those are item uh, identified as number three and seven, kind of on the, the top left there. That's, those are new shaded playground structures um, designed for different age groups, uh, sort of a, a younger K through uh, five, zero through five age group, and then a six through 12 kind of age group, um, all fully accessible and shaded. Um, to the right of that, it would be the new concessions building. So that's uh, right there, uh, numbers kind of 4, 15, new number one. To the right of that are the existing toilet rooms, um, the park admin building. And then you can see there that we've, as part of the proposal, we are uh, suggesting that we relocate the park maintenance building from the south end of the site to kind of the top right of the, of the site. 
Also, as part of that, we would relocate the dumpsters that are in the main parking area on the east side there, or well, really south. Uh, it, the plans rotated a little, a little bit. Um, relocating the dumpsters in, that, uh, in the existing parking area to the larger parking area over on the right of the slides, and then developing a new plaza space um, right at the main entry. So the new plaza space would, uh, well, I have some blow up slides of this, um, but it allows for sort of a larger turning radius as you come in uh, and, and go to either of the parking, radio, uh, uh, parking areas on either so side of the site. Uh, it also provides uh, a space for shaded seating. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of amenities and thought built into this site. There are sustainable elements like uh, native plantings, green roof on the new building, solar panels on the new building. Uh, we plan on incorporating um, uh, shower rinsing stations, um, uh, hydration stations for people and for pets, bike racks, um, et cetera, as part of the master plan. So there's a lot sort of packed into that, um, that plan. We also know that everyone is always, you know, concerned and interested for very valid reasons about parking and access to the site. It's already a very, um, you know, popular spot in the summer. And so as part of the process, we've looked at a couple options for increasing queuing space, getting into the site. Um, so right now it's basically a, a, a lane plus a, a, little, a little bit um, currently. And so we're looking at options to make that two or three lanes again to, in, to increase queuing space, get people out of the, at that intersection. So in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 cars potentially can be stacked by doing that. Um, this is uh, uh, essentially the existing condition with some existing lanes. And then this is what it might look like if we turn that into a more of a roundabout scenario. So uh, again, the goal with the limited space we have is to increase queuing space, but also facilitate um, you know, people getting past the site if the site happens to be full. A lot of conversation about that. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, that's a primary concern because we have this fantastic amenity that, again, everybody is excited uh, about going there during the summer, and we just want to do our, our best to make that as, as usable as we can. Yep. Question: uh, Would the roundabout be on city property or county property? It, it kind of it kind of overlaps that, and and all of this planning, we would want to end it. We would want to involve the city with. We would need to involve the city with that process. We understand that these are sort of just conceptual uh, approaches to um, options for you know improving it as best we can. But yeah, the city would need to be part of that conversation. So. Um, this is just a, a, a blow up of the plaza area. And one thing I didn't mention that's really a highlight of the plaza development. One thing we talked about is, is potentially building a timeline in pavers into the plaza. So you can see that white line that kind of goes from the drop off uh, out to the water's edge. Um, the idea is there is that we would just sort of similar to the floor here in the paving, we would engrave um, a timeline that might talk about the history of the site from indigenous developments to when it, you know, uh, became settled here as a, 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 you know, as a village and then a town and then city um, and, and its history as a um, uh, amusement park, et cetera. Just engrave those markers that into the timeline that talk about the development of the site, um, just to kind of develop that sense of place and, and the history. Uh, and then you can see there the, the shaded seating elements. Um, the different colors you see there are just gestures towards different paving elements. It's essentially just hard surface with uh, um, some, some texture, some uh, uh, interest added just in, in terms of different paving materials and hard surface materials, but it would essentially be flat uh, and not sand. May yeah. I um, ask when you, what you just said, WNIT? you know, did a thing about Silver Beach yeah. and they have lots of information and there's still people here, um, but you don't talk about the Shadowland at all. Is this just over this way? Is Will the, you know, stage continue to be where it is, da, 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 da? You're not doing anything with that? At, at, yeah, yes, that, that is um, outside the scope of this master plan. It would stay intact as it currently is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. My question really for plaza and material, just being mindful since we're having the conversation of 
it's going to be a hard surface, but can we make it pervious so that it at least got some percolation so we're not creating additional flashiness and runoff and things like that within the area? So we're mindful of the environmental impact. Yeah, that's all of that's on the table and an option. Absolutely. Just wanted to believe. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, just to reiterate, you can see there's some of the, sh the shaded seating uh, in, in, the, in the plaza, the bike racks, the hydration station, the rinsing stations, again, the playground structures there on the left uh, identified as number three. And so then what you're seeing there with the new concessions building, uh, right now, just for talking purposes, we're calling it Silver Beach Grill. Um, it's in the same location as the existing facility, but the, the plan here, the concept, the idea is to make it a, a, a two-story structure with an occupiable roof so that you get a little bit of elevation on the, you'll see on the ground floor. Um, well, let, let me come back to that because there's some renderings that will help explain that here. These are just some concept renderings of the shaded play structures. And then sort of an aerial view of, uh, of the site. So on the left, you can see there the play structures kind of in the middle is the new concessions building. This would be the view as you're walking in or, or driving into the site. So the grill, Silver Beach Grill on the right. And so this, this helps explain the, the concept for, the, for that new concessions building here. On the ground level, there would be standard concessions like we have now. Um, you know, burgers, hot dogs, ice cream, that kind of stuff. There would also be some retail opportunities for renting um, paddle boards and bikes and that sort of thing. Um, uh, T-shirts, water bottles, whatever, kind of standard concession opportunities, similar to the way that it functions now on the ground level. Um, part of that uh, would also be uh, covered, um, meaning the, the terrace on the second floor would cover some of the concessions area on, on the ground floor. And then the second floor, then you have an opportunity for potentially a little bit more upscale dining, eating experience with a roof terrace that has a little bit better view of the water. Um, we could potentially have, you know, an outdoor fireplace up there, again, shaded seating. Uh, a nice glass rail, uh, again, with really taking advantage of the special place that we, um, that, that concessions building, you know, occupies on the waterfront. There are um, similar kinds of developments, you know, in, in, in Michigan and around the country, but there aren't a lot of places that have this location, this close to the water with those kind of special views that we have. So we're trying to take advantage of that. This would be a, a view of, again of the concessions at the grade level with the roof terrace that provides some uh, shaded and, and covered uh, seating options at the grade level. Um, one thing I haven't talked about the, uh, um, is the um, incorporation of both the lifeguard station and the sheriff's office um, uh, position um, in the new development. So you'll see that in the plan, but. The idea, in addition to concessions, is to provide a spot for um, a new spot for the lifeguards uh, uh, and, and public safety to occupy a, a small office area within the development so that, um, again, just, you know, lifeguard re response, but people can come up and ask questions. If there's a lost child, they can, you know, go there, you know, to, to find somebody, you know, it, it's, again, super busy in the summer. And so um, for events, that's, that's a, a definite amenity. And then you can see there on the second floor, the kind of uh, terrace area looking out over the water. So this just a quick concept rendering of what that might look like on the, the terrace level. And then this is more of the service side, um, just th there, there would be roll up doors <coughs> that uh, service the concessions area probably have a little golf cart in there that allows them to take trash and that sort of thing out to the, to the dumpsters. So uh, each, uh, the, the ground floor and second floor are roughly 5,000 square feet. Um, uh, you can see the kind of concessions area at the, at the top of the image there, it's concessions and support. Then on the left side would be park safety and the lifeguard station. Kind of in the middle there where it says overhead doors is the uh, is the terrace over covered seating. And the, the goal here is for us to be able to take advantage as much as possible of the shoulder seasons 
Um, as everybody knows, it's super busy and popular no matter what you do in the summer, gets much less so in the shoulder seasons, early spring, fall, and, and not much in the winter. This would allow us the opportunity to provide some enclosed condition uh, concession space, essentially almost year round. Um, so you can see that there. Again, it's roughly 5,000 square feet of floor. It's roughly seating for, let's say, 40 people plus or minus, or excuse me, 60 people plus or minus on the, on the ground floor, roughly 140 people plus or minus on the second floor. So you can see the, the roof terrace there with a stair and, a, and a, maybe an outdoor fireplace at the bottom of the image. <clears throat> and then we have a video that will help kind of explain this in a little bit more uh, relatable fashion. Let's see. I think that's here. Yep. What's that? Do you want to? Uh, why is it not? Why is it paused? Maybe just close the PowerPoint. Oh, down here. There yeah. we go. Let's get out of that. So, and let's see. I'm not sure about getting the sound. Oh, sorry. And we can try to bring this up, maybe. I don't know if we're going to get. Cap, that's where we're at. Um, sure. Microphone here. Um, so kind of next steps or what we're thinking is um, a resolution came to PHSC last week and full board today to for the Parks Department to apply for a SPARC grant. And that would be to replace the 30 year old playground at the beach. And it's an amazing structure. It's really been, it's held up great. We, we inspect it every year professionally and internally. It gets inspected every other week. We replace parts as needed, uh, but it's at the end of its life. So this SPARC grant, um, if awarded, would be sort of essentially the first phase, phase one of this project. And having this overall concept idea on paper will allow us to build that playground so that when the funding comes together, uh, for phase two or phase three, that it can be built seamlessly between the various phases. Um, so the that that Spark grant application approval is coming to the full board today, and um, at this point we we we've, we've had public input, but we would like to sort of um, after you know hearing what you guys have to say, bring it further to the public, um, open it up to talking with investors and possible vendors who may go in that concession stand at some point to get a little more feedback and talk about funding the project. Any questions? Any questions? Sorry. Use your mics, please. Yep. Yeah. Question Sorry. I have is um, your playground concept. 
Now there's another smaller playground down the way. Is that going to disappear or is that going to be redone or eliminated? Great question. So uh, Silver Beach has a main playground and then a smaller playground up at the north end of the beach. That's a younger playground. It hasn't shown as much wear and tear and it's also protected by the dune. So in this grant and in this project, that is that one would be outside of the scope. That's more of a, maybe the next five or 10 years we'll be putting that one in the plan. So it's a, it's a newer one. Um, Right now it's one company. Um, uh, we can both speak on that. Um, we're open to ideas. So right now we do have one company that does the food concessions and retail. We have a second concessionaire outside of that space that does the kayak rentals. Um, it could stay similar depending on who's able to invest or what kind of vendors come to us or through the bid process. We're open to multiple vendors if that's the way um, the, the service will work best. So we're open to all ideas. Um, I'm just going to piggyback after. Oh, maybe. And uh, the, yeah, I was wondering if they're going to have, besides concessions, a little store to sell like sweatshirts or towels, because whenever I go to the beach, my job is to go get stuff that we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to run all over and you just brought up the vendors. So yeah. Yes. Not a bad idea. The current 30 by 30 building does sell some of those items, but it's bursting at the seams. There's always a line and we could do so many, so much more in the service area. And that includes the retail, the sunscreen, the towels, the shovels and buckets, and as well as the food. So. Do we have a, a conceptual idea in terms of additional staffing requirements? Internally, if, if, we, um, if we coordinate the, this concession stand after it's built in a similar way as we run the park now, we would um, have an agreement with an outside vendor to run. So internally, we wouldn't necessarily need to bring on uh, much additional staff. We would rely on the professionals that know how to run concession stands and um, and that kind of thing to come in and do the hiring. So they would be they would be the employer for their employees. We have some history in terms of vetting and and filtering through and yeah. Yeah. The current concession like stand was built in 2003, and it was meant to be a temporary building and improved and in, um, enhanced and enlarged as the park visitor numbers grew. Uh, so it's time, and um, we've, we've worked with um, a few different vendors over the years. We've gone out to bid for the service, so we do have some experience with that. Sir. Uh, another question I have is your public safety area. Mm -hmm. um, is that designed to have somebody there full time, or I mean, because then we're going to have to look at the sheriff's department to compliment somebody to be there for park hours. Sure. Um, right now, we just wanted to make sure that we built in the public safety and water safety aspect to this building. Right now, if someone has an issue, it's kind of hard to find. The beach office this would be more centralized so in the concept that we have here we do have the sheriff's symbol on there um, it might not end up looking like that it may end up being an information kiosk area including safety including water safety issues maybe even education to kids about water safety it's a big issue internally with our staff so um, it, it could look a lot of different ways we realize it would be hard to um, have sheriff's deputy on site all the time sitting at a window, but we do have, um, we have great staff. We have great lifeguards that could man that for informational purposes. And when the sheriff's department is there on staff, they would have a location to conduct some of their business out of. So there will be, let's say some type of communication station there in case something happens to where they can directly get. <laughs> 
Correct. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, only comments. Better turn my microphone on. Mm -hmm. Only comment again as we kind of go through this, and this is the big high level view. Um, being mindful of those buildings that any flexibility, because we may pivot and find that in five to 10 years, we, we may want more um, educational space, like what we have out at uh, Love Creek or something to that extent, to just be mindful of making certain whatever we design conceptually is flexible um, long term. I agree, it's, it's very important. Um, yeah knowing that what's been there has started in the early 90s and has got us this far and we can provide incredible services out of that we would like to design this for the next 30 or 40 years as well as it grows and those kinds of needs um, public meeting space even small rental areas for small parties uh, small weddings or i mean the ideas are endless so we want to make sure that we go through that whole entire um feedback process to make sure we're working all that in. So yeah, thank you for that comment. Okay, if there's nothing else, thank you. Thank you. Um, we will uh, pivot back. And uh, Brian, unless you have something, we'll go to public comments and segue to committees. Yeah, go ahead. Any public comments? Okay. Hearing none, any other business? All right then, let's go to committees and come back at 10.30.